Hey guys, it's DC here and today I wanted to talk to you about is it possible to be overqualified for a job in cybersecurity? So this was a question that was asked to me um, just last week and someone was saying I want to get this certificate and this and this and this and this and this and this but will that make me overqualified for the position that I actually want to apply for and it's an interesting question because there's sort of like a scale of where you should begin and your progression along so I want to sort of talk about that a little bit in detail so for example this guy wants to go for a job as a SOC analyst and he wants to complete a degree and then a CompTIA security plus a network plus a Linux plus a Red Hat uh, enterprise certification, um, a CCNA, an OSCP, and I don't know, one other thing. Now, is that sort of certification overkill for a SOC position? Definitely yes. And here's why. You should actually have your, I guess, experience and certifications aligned for the position you want to go for. But you need to keep in mind that experience definitely weighs out certifications for every day so what I mean is if you're going for a job as a junior SOC analyst and you have no experience that's fine you still want to have at least one or two of those certifications to at least show that you can do the job so if you're going for a SOC analyst role you apply with a security plus and maybe a CH and a CCNA that's it that's all you need maximum and the same sort of thing goes for like a network engineer or a network security engineer. You just have your CCNA and maybe your degree and that's enough. That will get you a job as a network engineer. If you want to progress further and become a senior network engineer, maybe you need your CCIE or you know, a CCMP or, or something a little bit higher than a CCNA as well as the experience that you have from being a junior or mid-level network engineer. For example my certifications I have a lot of different certifications from the almost 15 years of working in IT and now I'm not going to apply for a job as a desktop support guy because I won't get it I'm overqualified for that position but if I was wanting to go into management or maybe to be another SOC team lead somewhere else or now that I've got that experience and all of those different certifications um, maybe I want to do my own business and then help other people to progress upwards from there That would make sense for me But do you sort of see where I'm coming from? I wouldn't apply to be a desktop support guy because I'm already Overqualified for that position and I wouldn't get it and a lot of places would just see me and my experience in certs as overqualified and maybe just a stepping stone so they think, oh, you know, maybe this guy is really hard to employ because he, he doesn't work out in teams or whatever. So he's going for a lower job where he can just sort of get the work done and disappear. But they, they don't want someone like that. They want someone hungry. The thing is, though, once you get to sort of that mid-level, this is where um, having more certifications rather than not is a good thing. And what I would recommend here is to get your junior position out of the way and then get experience at least two years right after you've got your two years experience you're sort of moving towards that mid-level uh, area you can't sort of just go straight to a team lead position so if you go from having uh, two years in a, a SOC team for example and to get there you had your security plus uh, a degree and a CCNA that's great You've then got your, your base certifications and your base experience. You then move into like a, a mid-level role of um, like a level two SOC analyst or uh, a senior systems administrator or a senior network engineer or whatever it is that the stepping stone is for you. That's where you would then go to with that experience. Once you've got that position, then you can move upwards with your certifications as well. So then you get your um, CYSA or um, maybe you want to start moving towards pen testing. You get your advanced pen testing um, certification or maybe then your CCIE or, or whatever it is and move into that mid-level to higher range of certifications. 
And once you're at this point, this is where you can apply for pretty much any other certifications you want to build some sort of speciality because that's sort of where the big money is and um, usually what people do because they've, they've found their own passion within whatever they're working on and then they, they sort of move upwards from there into whichever area and then become a, a senior level of that position. So I hope that sort of makes sense to answer that question. Um, I guess the long and short of it is that yes, you can definitely be overqualified for a lot of positions and usually that, that starting bracket is where you, it's a mixed area of people who have um, too many certifications or not enough certifications or definitely not enough experience. And I can't recommend it enough but get as much experience as you can and think about the certifications later. And I know it's sort of like which came first, the chicken or the egg. And in this case, it's you need those certifications to get that entry level job and you need that entry level job to then get those certifications. And it's I don't really have a good recommendation here apart from doing some free certifications like the ones in um, some of my other videos that I've mentioned to get you a job as a junior position and then moving upwards from there. Or if you have a degree, have a look at just getting a, a CompTIA Security Plus and a CCNA and moving into a SOC analyst role if there are any SOC teams around where you live. The other alternative there is that you could work for an MSP um, as a security engineer and um, they just level them up. So you're just like level one, level two, level three and that's sort of like your entry level, your medium level, and your expert level. And you just sort of move up within that organization itself or bounce between other MSPs. There's, there's thousands of them around. And yeah, just sort of work your way up through that way. That way you're getting experience and often those MSPs are gonna help you pay for your certifications um, after you've sort of done the first few and proven that you're worthwhile to that company. Anyway, I hope this video has helped you and sort of cleared the mud a little bit. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching. As always, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Comment if you have any questions. I'm more than happy to answer you. And of course, subscribe for more videos just like this one. Thanks, guys.